Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Wanders, and this is week number five of my 2023 pantry challenge. The rules or guidelines that I set out for myself in this challenge is to not spend any money on groceries and to use up something, one thing, ingredient, one ingredient from the pantry challenge pantry that I kind of threw together uh, in every meal that I make. I gather together items from my larger pantry and around the house of things items that I that were past their best before date or had been hanging out in the pantry for a really long time or that I didn't really like and I wasn't using up to try to focus on those items just to kind of go through them and use them so so that's what I did I put together a pantry challenge pantry and I'm trying to use up those ingredients in my pantry for this pantry challenge if you're new here, I'll leave a link up here to the entire 2023 pantry challenge if you want to watch it all from the beginning. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to see more videos from me or check out the join button for more ways to support my channel. I took a little bit of time at the beginning of this week to try to decide whether or not I was going to continue on into February with the no spend challenge. And then I just didn't spend any money. So <laughs> this week is a no spend, another no spend. Uh, by the end of the video, I'll decide whether or not I'm going to keep going with that. So you'll have to stay tuned. Let's see what I came up with this week. For breakfast this morning, I'm just going to toast up some of this bread, oatmeal, walnut, Bread I made, it's used up whole wheat flour and the little packets of instant oatmeal. And for those of you who are paying attention, I am now into my second container of free Nutella. <laughs> so it's going really well, the free Nutella. I like it a lot. I was gonna do a bunch of baking, but sometimes I just eat it with a spoon. Don't tell anybody. Hazelnuts are good for you, right? I think they're good for you. Then I've got some strawberry jam that I made this year. Strawberry jam. Yummy for breakfast. Toast again. Peanut butter and honey and some of my strawberry jam on that oatmeal nut bread. I really am enjoying that bread. I think it might replace my regular whole wheat uh, bread machine recipe that I use because it's really, really nice. Peanut butter and honey. More toast for breakfast. This one is um, like a dessert toast, Nutella and honey for breakfast. I love this bread so much. This oatmeal nut bread is really, really yummy and I'm enjoying having toast for breakfast. That's the last of that bread loaf that I made, the oatmeal nut bread, and we're just having toast and jam and various Nutella things for breakfast. This morning, I am going to do a recipe suggestion from Carol Malky or Mel, Mal, Malky. <laughs> Correct me. I think I might have pronounced your name wrong in the past. But anyways, Carol Mal, Malky, Malky. She suggested I do peach cobbler with my peaches. So I found a great recipe online that uses canned peaches instead of fresh peaches that I will post in the description below. It uses up some milk. This is skim milk powder milk. It uses butter, sugar, salt. I'm going to use whole grain flour instead of all-purpose flour um, just to try to use up that. Baking powder and cinnamon. So we're going to do that up. I don't know if it's breakfast, but we're probably going to eat it for breakfast. 350. I'm going to take approximately half a cup of butter and melt it in a nine by nine inch Pan, approximately. That's a lot of butter. Does that seem like half a cup? It seems like a, a lot of butter. <laughs> Looks like too much butter, so I kind of put it in the half cup measure. So it is a bit too much butter. So half a cup 
We're gonna melt it in the nine by nine inch pan. I'm just gonna melt it in the microwave. Half a cup of butter into this pan. Seems like a lot of butter. It's like half a cup. Seems like a lot, an awful lot of butter. Wow. This will be good. Now I need a batter to go on the bottom. So I've got one cup of flour, one cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, magic baking powder, and a pinch of salt. I don't know how much a pinch of salt is. That much? That was a pinch. Mix that up. I hope the whole wheat flour is just fine. Oh, it's good. How could it be bad? It's got a cup of sugar in there and a half a cup of butter. It's got to be good. Okay, we're going to add milk. One cup of milk. like a pancake, pancake batter. I was expecting it to be a little bit thicker. <laughs> there's that. Because these are half peaches or large chunks, chunks of peaches, I think, I think I'm going to take them out and sort of slice them a little bit. Hopefully kind of carefully without losing any of the juices in there be quite a little operation here to sort of make them smaller like that. Just some nicer sized peach slices. I think we want slices of peach. All right, I think that is awesome. Peach is sliced up. We have our melty half cup of butter. And now I'm gonna add this batter, this kind of batter stuff. It says carefully, so it spreads evenly over the butter mixture. Just kind of everywhere. It's weird. I don't feel like I've ever done anything like this recipe at all, ever. I usually make like crisps instead of cobblers. I honestly thought the batter was something that goes on top. But that's not what this is. There's just butter everywhere. My mom's gonna give me a hard time about my cholesterol. I don't have high cholesterol, but but if you do, what can you use for a butter substitute for this recipe? I don't know. Would margarine work? Now it wants the peaches and the juice on top of here, spooned over top. I'm not using a slotted spoon. I'm just using like a spoon so I can get those juiced juices too. I hope this turns out into something amazing because it looks kind of goopy right now, honestly. I wonder if I did something wrong somewhere in there. All the peaches too. And you can sprinkle with cinnamon if you want to. No good at sprinkling things. Come on, cinnamon, sprinkle. Oh, you are all clumpy, clumpy bits of cinnamon. <laughs> sprinkle loosely. Mmm, yeah, that smells good right away. Definitely sprinkle with cinnamon. And we're going to put that in the oven, 350 for, it says 38 to 44 minutes. So I'm going to check it at 38 minutes. That just doesn't look done to me. 
gonna put it in for another four minutes. I don't think it's gonna get any more poofy than this. Looks pretty cooked. And it's like, I don't know how you check this. Maybe still with a toothpick? Yeah, it's not gooey or anything. Smells really good. Just gonna let it cool for maybe five minutes and then we'll put them in a bowl. Well, I think that it didn't maybe puff up as much as I thought it was going to puff up. Oh, oh that's nice. It does smell a little bit like whole wheat flour because I used that whole wheat flour. If you used white flour, it would be, you know, obviously a lot whiter <laughs> because I think it turned out okay though. Looking, it's not too, too bad looking. I think that other than the fact that it looks a little bit browner in color, um, I think it turned out really well. So we've got two bowls of peach cobbler. If you had some whipping cream or even just some really thick cream or ice cream, you could put this on top. It's already got a fair amount of sugar in it. Obviously lots of butter. I want to get that crusty topping. See what that's about. That would be a little more poofy, but... It was super easy. That's a thing. And it got quite brown on the on the sides. Crispy. Mm. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that is so good. Mm -hmm. I could see how you could put vanilla ice cream on that right away. Wasn't too much cinnamon. That's canned peaches. I thought that was going to be a little watery, but it's not very watery it's nice and moist mm -hmm. peach cobbler that was surprisingly easy recipe thank you so much for this for the suggestion carol Melky. that's brilliant used up a can of peaches easy peasy and it used the juice from the peaches which was also uh really nice because you know you don't want to waste that good peachy goodness yeah perfect i want to eat this <laughs> right up Peach cobbler for breakfast, I guess. Or you could use it as a dessert. <laughs>
That's no good. Ugh. I don't know why I'm so distracted. I'm trying to do things too fast. I think. I need a quite a bit of oil to fry up these falafels. In a pan that I'm going to heat up. I didn't quite make 12 balls. I don't think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I did. I made exactly 12 balls. There you go. Ooh. have like super success trying to open up these pita pocket things oh these ones are going well oh they often oh, they often break I can't, I can't always get it doesn't always work out see ah i know i know they're supposed to open up and it's supposed to be a beautiful thing but it's not what happens all the time. What do you do then? If it doesn't work, you make a sandwich, pita sandwich. Okay, I'm making sandwiches now. So I've got the ranch dressing. I'm just gonna make pita sandwiches. I know it's not pita with tzatziki, like falafels usually go with tzatziki and cucumbers and stuff, but I think the ranch dressing is gonna work. We're gonna try it. Work with what we have to so get three falafels per sandwich. If I make four sandwiches, it's kind of a lot, they're actually pretty big. Lettuce salsa from the fridge. Should also go with falafels. Yeah, sure. And that falafel sandwich. <laughs> I mean, it's not a classic falafel pita pita thing but we're gonna eat it so we've got salsa falafels <laughs> salsa falafels for lunch i'm gonna add some of this carrot salad that i made up that we have left over for lunch today carrot salad and salsa falafel ranch dressing falafel sandwiches for lunch today so ranch dressing on these falafels is just fine it tastes really good i would probably do that again but the carrot salad is quite nice the next day. I like the raisins in it, but I still feel like it has too many nuts, this particular recipe. I'd maybe only add half as many walnuts, but these sandwiches are just fine. In a pinch, use ranch dressing for your falafels. You guys are all being so amazing about giving me suggestions that it's getting a little like complicated. <laughs> so the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna uh, I only talk about the first person in each challenge that suggested a recipe. So today I'm making sort of like a, a mac and cheese, like a baked mac and cheese. I'm going to add some peas to the macaroni and cheese, and I'm going to add some uh, kale powder to it as well. I'm going to dice up a few cherry tomatoes or sun. They're not really sun dried tomatoes. They're cherry tomatoes that I dried in the dehydrator, but I'm going to dice up a couple of those really really small and add them and then the first person to suggest using cornflake crumbs on top of baked mac and cheese was sandra williams make sure that you guys t let me know all of your unique uh, ideas but know that i do keep going back through the the challenge that i'm working on so i'm looking at all of the recipe suggestions 
in this pantry challenge, this 2023 pantry challenge uh, is where I'm looking for recipe ideas. And I do look through all the, the weeks and I, I write it all down. So, so that's super helpful, but putting this getting to be so many suggestions is so great. And it's such a great resource of recipe ideas that is happening in the comment sections. I love it. Today I'm doing Sandra Williams suggestion because she was the first one to suggest it. Cornflake crumbs. I've still got a fair amount of cornflake crumbs on just regular craft dinner, KD. I'm going to add peas and all that kind of stuff. So I think that maybe uh, I might want to drizzle some butter on the top of it just so that they're sort of more crispy or something for a couple of lunches. I'm going to preheat the oven to 350 and I'm going to cook my macaroni and cheese according to the package instructions. throw this one cup of peas in there as well. Cook those up. Ack, I just realized it didn't have any milk to make up the craft dinner, so I'm gonna do up a liter of this skim milk powdered milk. It takes one cup of powder to make one liter of milk. So I'm gonna do that up real quickly. Oh my gosh, I just remembered that I have some bacon. <laughs> so I'm going to chop up this bacon as well uh, and put it in there. Third of a cup of milk. That's what happens when I start making things. I just find more stuff. Try more stuff. Try to make it more complicated. Even though I think that I really want some easy meals. Something about the sound of mac and cheese stirring that is really familiar. Some butter that I scraped out of my butter dish. <laughs> yes, use everything. One tablespoon of butter or margarine or non-hydrogenated margarine. I don't know why it still says it on the package. Pretty much in Canada, I think all margarine now is non-hydrogenated. I'm not sure. They decided that was really bad for you. Hydrogenated, hydrogenated vegetable oil, bad. I'm gonna add maybe that's two tablespoons of these diced dried cherry tomatoes. Some chopped up bacon. I'm so happy I found that, that's super awesome. About half a tablespoon of this kale powder. Mix that all up in there. And transfer it to this very cute container. Hope it fits in there. Bacon smells good right away, of course. I can smell the uh, kale, actually. And it's showing up as little green flakes in the dish. Can you see the kale flakes in there? The kale flakes, it's not too bad. I don't think. And then on top of this, we're going to put some cornflake crumbs. One tablespoon. Two tablespoons. So maybe three tablespoons of cornflake crumbs. Uh, oh, geez. No, four. Four tablespoons of cornflake crumbs, mostly because I missed that other one. 
Yeah, four tablespoons of cornflake crumbs. Nah, more. Five, five tablespoons. Of cornflake crumbs. Ha, 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 ha. There we go. I actually don't have any. I just used up the last of my not frozen butter. So I'm <laughs> just going to put this in to the oven exactly how it is. into the oven, 350. I'm probably gonna give it maybe 15 minutes. It is pretty warm, but I don't think it got very brown on top. I'm gonna put it back in uh, under broil, see what happens. That was two minutes on the high broil. Now it looks toasty. Awesome. Mm, it smells like cooking cornflakes. Not very creamy. That's well, that's a little bit. I might put some hot sauce on top of it. I've got Frank's Red Hot or Sriracha or even ketchup would probably work on top of this. With the bacon and the tomato. But I'm gonna try it first without without any hot sauce. It did get very, very steamy. And 15 minutes in the oven at 350 and then three minutes on high broil. I'm gonna try some of those sun-dried tomatoes. I'm gonna get some peas and some of the topping of cornflake crumbs. Give it a try. Hmm, that's pretty good. I'm gonna throw some sriracha on there. Definitely some hot sauce. Yummy. I think it'll be good. Mmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Mix that scratch in. And that is going to be wonderful. I wish I'd had a little bit of butter that I could sort of put drizzle on the top, but all mixed in it adds a nice little kind of breading to the to the pasta so it works out really well thank you so much for the suggestions sandra williams and everybody else who suggested putting cornflake crumbs on top of mac and cheese awesome I am not feeling especially motivated or creative tonight for dinner, so I'm just going to make up like a sloppy joe mix. I've got a lot of leftover things to use up in the fridge as well. We've got some leftover green beans, some leftover couscous, this leftover um, carrot salad. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put all those together. A slice of bread. We've got bread if you want to do that too. Oh, I've got ground beef, ketchup, mustard. I'm going to use, this is the thing I'm trying to use up, this garlic um, tomato paste. So I'm still using something out of the pantry. I've got this onion. I've got brown sugar. So that's what this is going to be for dinner tonight. I think it'll be just fine on the couscous. There's not a lot of couscous left, but we'll use it up. Yeah, easy peasy. Some oil. Yeah, half an onion, two cloves of garlic, two large cloves of garlic, fry that onion for about five minutes until it's kind of like soft, right? About three quarters to one cup of ketchup, like that much ish two tablespoons to one quarter of a cup of mustard probably just two tablespoons of mustard i have got some pretty dry brown sugar i'm gonna put about two tablespoons in about half of this tomato paste i think i only have one more tomato paste in the cupboard to use up so that's awesome I'll just put this in the fridge or the freezer till I want to use a half of one of these. 
Put a quarter cup of water just to kind of mix it all together. We'll let it simmer for maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, I did let it simmer for 10 minutes. It looks really good. It smells wonderful. Yummy. I heated up my green beans and my couscous. I'm gonna add this sloppy joe kind of mix to the mix, to the plates. Looks pretty good. And I'm gonna add some of this leftover carrot salad as well. Kind of a mix, match, mash up, mix up, leftover dinner, but it looks pretty good. Using up leftovers and some more tomato paste. That carrot salad just gets better the longer it exists, which is super nice. But this sloppy joe mix with couscous, sure. Mm -hmm. I think you could put this sloppy joe mix on anything and it would be good. It's pretty sweet. You can use one tablespoon of brown sugar if you want to. Mmm. Yummy dinner. And he'll probably take some salad for uh, work. He'll add salad when he gets home for this. And then he also another work lunch, maybe put some bread on top of it or something like that. That uh, sloppy dough mix made three meals. Hello, for dinner tonight, I am going to make a recipe suggestion from Layla. They suggested using lentils in spaghetti sauce way back in week number one. I've been humming and hawing over it and I found a really pretty great recipe that even uses some ground walnuts. I ground up these walnuts to fine. So now I can throw them in this spaghetti sauce. I will post a link in the description below for the recipe that I am very loosely gonna try to follow. This recipe uses lentils. Um, it's a vegan recipe. I think I'll be vegan. I'm not going to add any beef broth or anything. I'm just going to add some water. I'm going to add a little, a few more things to it. I've got celery. I've got peppers, but I do have one onion, the garlic. I'm going to use tomato sauce instead of canned tomatoes. And then I'm going to add a little bit, uh, the rest of this half a can of tomato paste that I have, plus the water to make it kind of more liquids. I'm going to add some dried mushrooms. I'm probably going to sneak in some of this kale. And I might dice up some uh, dried cherry tomatoes. I've got salt, I've got red pepper flakes. I gotta grind up some more red peppers. And this is my kind of Italian seasoning. Thyme and rosemary and garlic powder and onion powder and things like that in there. So we'll throw that in there too. Um, and peppers, I've got some, just some green bell peppers and red bell peppers I'll dice up and throw in there. And then these ground walnuts, that's kind of great. Kind of give it a little more meaty texture, I think. And then I'm gonna use one cup of these red split lentils, rinsed and everything. And I'm gonna serve it over spaghetti. This box says it's spaghettini, but I just fill it up from a larger box of spaghetti I have downstairs. So it's spaghetti and some salt for dinner tonight. Lentil bolognese, lentil pasta, lentil spaghetti sauce from a suggestion from Layla way back in week one. Awesome. Let's see how it goes. And actually, I'm going to throw a couple of carrots in there as well. Why not? Maybe two tablespoons of olive oil. Four one medium onion. Celery. Near pork. Near pork. Green peppers. I'm gonna add about one tablespoon of this uh, Italian seasoning. 
about a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, half a tablespoon of kale powder, one teaspoon of salt. Because I don't have any salt in my tomato sauce that I make, so I'm just adding that much more regular tomato sauce that you buy it already has lots of salt in it. Like a tablespoon or two of diced garlic and about two tablespoons of diced dried cherry tomatoes. Lovely. I'm going to add this tomato paste. It's about half of a tin of tomato paste. Got a handful of these dried mushrooms. And a half a cup of water. It did call for crushed tomatoes or diced tomatoes, but I'm just going to use this tomato sauce. Yummy. That is smelling pretty good. Lots of tomato sauce. And I'm just going to rinse the can out, the jar out, and put that water in there too. recipe called for half a cup of red lentils and a half a cup of ground walnuts but because I don't have very many ground walnuts I'm just going to use one cup of red lentils and then whatever small amount of ground walnuts I have to use up so it's mostly lentils that I'm going to use make sure you rinse them see the kind of cloudy water that comes out of them you want to get that all out Just like rice, rinse your lentils. Always rinse your lentils. All right, can I add the lentils in there? And they should absorb some liquid and puff up. Might have to add a little bit more liquid, I think. They look so bright, red lentils, when you first put them in there. Obviously, whole lentils would be kind of meatier, but this is what I've got right now. And I'm just going to let that simmer for about 20 minutes. Ha! It's been almost 20 minutes. I did end up adding... Uh, half a cup, that's my second quarter cup of water. We will add in these walnuts. I think that's probably like more than, a little bit more than a quarter cup of these ground walnuts that I had. Everywhere, <laughs> let's just spray them everywhere. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna give them another 10 minutes just to try and cook those lentils a little bit more and to warm up those walnuts I guess. I don't know if you need to cook the walnuts. Give it 10 minutes. It's being very thick. With the 10 minutes for warming up the walnuts I probably only cooked it an extra maybe seven minutes or something. And you can tell that the lentils are cooked because they aren't that bright red color anymore and they they kind of look like they aren't lentils unless you look really close and they're nice and squishy so let's get them on some noodles okay well this spaghetti sauce you know it smells just like like spaghetti sauce with meat i wouldn't be able to tell the difference in the in the smell not that I need my lentils to be always the same as a meat dish they're they're pretty good all on their own so I'm not always just trying to make it be ground beef they can be lentils be yourself lentils You're good just the way you are. Wow, 
I can put some cheese on this. This one is Mr. Waters. <laughs> Bigger. Sure, he'll put up some cut up peppers on that. This is lentil bolognese. Made two dinners and a lunch, and there's more sauce. I think uh, I don't have enough noodles, but I'll just cook some more noodles for another dinner. And, and that'll be two dinners and a lunch, which is pretty good. It's not very runny as far as my pasta sauces go. It's hard to get some. And that's pretty good. Maybe even could have cooked the lentils a little bit more so they were a little bit a little bit even more mushy, but they're pretty good. The sauce tastes fine. It tastes uh, fabulous, just like spaghetti sauce. And the lentils are good. I should have not told Mr. Wanders that there was lentils, and then I could have just asked him if he could tell the difference. I mean, I can tell they're lentils because I'm, I'm expecting lentils. I'm, certainly, it beefs it up just like a ground beef would or any kind of ground meat would beef up a spaghetti sauce. So there's that, and it works just awesome for that. It tastes just the same as a spaghetti sauce. I don't know if the lentils taste exactly like ground beef, but they substitute just fine. Thumbs up for me, lentil bolognese. Thank you, Layla, for the suggestion. This is really yummy. I would do this again. I would maybe try like mixing half and half too, or maybe just lentil spaghetti as a thing. Yum. Here is what's left in the pantry after week number five. I did make it another week without buying any more groceries. Probably not on purpose. I just didn't get it done and we didn't buy anything and I didn't put an order in, but we survived, so that's fine. I have big plans this coming week for some uh, meal ideas, some recipe ideas that you guys have given me. We still have some stuffing mix. Three boxes of stuffing mix. You guys have given me some ideas for that. I still have a few more lentils, maybe another two cups of lentils. These yellow split peas, still some whole wheat flour. I have a lot of squashes or pumpkins in the, in the pantry from the garden. If you guys want to give me some whole wheat flour and squash re recipes, that would be awesome. We did manage to use up that, that falafel mix as well as some whole wheat flour in the peach cobbler. We used up more cornflake crumbs in the cornflake crumb craft dinner. I feel like it's getting sparser. I feel like I am making progress after five weeks. Mr. Wanders is almost officially out of coffee, which is a, a crazy emergency so i have to put in an order just for that i think this week i'm not going to be able to avoid getting a few things from the grocery store but i still want to focus on using up all this all this stuff in this pantry just because this is the stuff that i want to i want to kind of cycle through focus on these things that i want to I am, I'm, and I am. I'm really coming up with a lot of things that I can put my kale powder in. Look how much it reduced it down. It was a whole another container of kale that was this size. I ground it up, and now I have all this more kale powder, which I'm not in a hurry to use up, but I am enjoying finding recipes that you can put kale powder in. That's fun. I so much appreciate you guys being here and watching the videos and giving me all your great feedback and recipe suggestions. Let's keep going on into February. I think I probably have enough here with meal ideas and uh, suggestions to make it until the end of February. With this pantry challenge, no problem. Just pick up a couple of little things, not much. We can call it a low spend challenge maybe. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can click my face to subscribe to see more videos from me. And I will leave links to the entire 2023 pantry challenge, as well as anything else that you might be interested in. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.